more of Dastler's Halmites and their worthless blessings. At least he knew a thing or two about the seedy tavern. It sounds like you have to pay your way with smuggler's coin if you're not wearing the colors of the blood sailors. Languages. Of course, she was raised knowing her native tongue and common, written in the Thora script. At Candlekeep, she also learned Sylvan, the language of fake creatures like dryads, nymphs, and the like, written in the Elven script. As well as languages written in the Draconic script, like, well, Draconic itself, a must for wizards. Latinese, in order to read technical treaties from Latin firsthand. And even Orin, the language of air based creatures. Fair enough. Locked. Locked shipping makes Lily's life difficult. Fair enough. And impatient familiars even more. Luckily, he didn't send its contents to the bottom of the harbor. Resist elements. Only 135 more to go. And countless more languages. Later, she learned Undercommon, also known as the Deep Speech, the Underdark trading language written in the Elven script, as spoken by Drow, Durgar, Zerf Neblin, and the like. She also learned languages written in the Infernal script, Abyssal, the language of demons, <laughs> with a little help from Yahi for some of its more off-color expressions, and Infernal, the language of devils. She had little choice but to learn that one. The gods would have laughed at her if she tried to ascend to Duramore without knowing Infernal. But then, after her exile, she lost retention of exactly half of them. In particular, Abyssal, Orin, Aquan, Lentanese, and Sylvan. In fact, she only recently relearned Sylvan. Though, it would be so much easier if she could simply cast Comprehend Languages permanently on herself, like she used to. Alas, she's not yet skilled enough to do so. Nobody walks away. Yeah, actually, I think you could see the messages there. The knockdown hit. Fool. How he was able to acquire two smugglers' coin at all was beyond Lily. And this unpleasant looking half orc, in Tannis Bane no less. He's likely a bad omen, not that Lily's superstitious, mind you, and she wants nothing to do with him. In fact, she's rather tired, though one more half hearted dock inspection can't hurt. Gloves of Discipline. In Sembia, home to Raven's Riffraff, if you recall, Overlord Kendrick Selkirk's eldest son, Miklos, was a bit of an adventurer in his youth, and during that time he called himself the Silver Raven. When he returned home, he formed a band of mercenary adventurers called the Silver Ravens. It was formed to improve Sembia's image abroad, gather information, retrieve magical treasures, and accomplish the types of missions that he took care of himself when he was an adventurer. Anyway, he commissioned the Gloves of Discipline to keep new recruits from fumbling and dropping their weapons during training, and it was an extraordinary success. At last, the Golden Apple Inn. The Golden Apple Inn. Now just wait right there. And don't move Fair a enough. muscle until I say. <laughs> Lily leaves her animals by the door. In the air is the smell of turtle soup, brown bread, garlic butter, and spicy sausage. And of course, the ever-present stench of stale ale. In the common room, an older, friendly-looking barmaid, trying to keep customers happy. 
do business to you. Oh, here's Gilda. Sorry, but the kitchen's closed tonight. How much business, what with the plague and all? Aren't asking if she's seen anything strange. Well, yes, actually. A smuggler's coin, I think it's called. I get them from time to time. Odd-looking things. <laughs> yeah, I think Lou's gonna ask to take that into evidence. I suppose. Gerald usually gets them anyway. I get them occasionally from Calic and Vengal. Nice boys. Yeah, where could she find Calic? Don't know. Calic has a house in the northeast corner of the district. I'm gonna call on him. Quite busy. That's good to know. All right. I don't get out much now. It's too dangerous. Wasn't always like this, though. They're asking why it's so dangerous now. People really seem to be desperate for money. I'm mostly concerned about the plague myself. Or she's talking about Jim CD's tavern. I've never been inside. I prefer a good neighborhood pub, and they're all business. It ain't for me to say, but it just seems like it's more for meetings than social things. They have auctions there, too, now and then. Because we've seen the notices. Alright. No trouble. Lily secures a room upstairs for her and Little Red, though Gilda admits it's more a meeting room than a bedchamber, and so only charges them half. Five silvers. At least Lily discovered where Calix's house is in the district for when she returns to begin her official investigation. But she wonders who this Vengal is that Gilda mentioned. Likely an associate of Calix, and likely a blood sailor as well. Black Grog Ale. A tipple all the way from the Pirate Isles of the Sea of Fallen Stars. Fair enough. In Waterdeep, in the Castle Ward, there's an alley called Buckle Alley. Done and done. It's named that because of old, the city guard were told to buckle on their blades before setting foot in the alley. The alley being the heart of the Thieves' Guild, before it was all but driven out of Waterdeep. Those thieves would sit in the alley, drinking, drawn swords laid naked across their laps, just in case the city watch showed up. And they would drink black grog ale. Or at least that's how Shandia explained it to Lily. Anyway, one can still find the ale at taverns near the alley today. Imported all the way from Imerk's Hold, the main settlement on Dragon Isle, the largest of the Pirate Isles. Another bottle to add to the Office of Academic Affairs Cellars, though as a last resort. This is bottom of the barrel, one copper a tankard fare. Lily will also forgo sampling the turtle soup, even though Gilda is quick to point out that it comes served with a stack of crumbly biscuits drenched in melted butter. You just follow me and stay close. And apparently, Lord Androt Golden is nowhere to be seen. He must be at his estate. And Lily and company must be alone. The second floor, all to themselves. Or so they thought. Oh boy, alright, here's a mugger <laughs> inside the room. Muggers. 
waiting in the room. Things must be bad in the district indeed. And apparently on account of everyone trying to raise smuggler's coin for the upcoming auction at Seedy's Tavern. And the room is, as Gilda said, a meeting room, but it will suffice. But despite being quiet, it's right above the kitchen. So Lily can still smell that awful turtle soup. Even the Moonstone Mass serves the stuff, but at least there they offer alternatives. Like a mussel and basil soup, a variety of chowders, and even octopus broth. Here it's turtle soup all the way down. Lily sits at the head of the meeting room table to learn a new spell. Resist elements. A tired Lily shows Little Red the new bag of holding. She simply laughs and asks if they make a corset of holding. Lily can't imagine why she'd ask. Her mistress hasn't seen a single part of her not worthy of holding in any dimension. Lily stirs as her nostrils are assaulted by what must be the early morning batch of turtle soup. She gives Little Red one of the cheap imitation moonstone masks, explaining that the poor quality is on account of it being a disguise to look like poor burglars and not well-to-do ladies in a mask. Little Red sleepily nods. While leaving the Golden Apple, Lily hears a patron talking about how the Talentor Blight Lords have begun mustering a Blight Spawned army to crush the Circle of Lath and raise the Great Dale. But it's too early. Lily's not sure what he's talking about. She's also not looking forward to wearing a mask. Things that Lily likes and dislikes, in no particular order. Number 27, headgear. Dislike. Sure, it's not a hood, but still, it's irritating nonetheless. By irritating, Lily means interfering with her hair. That's really what it comes down to. She simply doesn't like anything tousling her hair. So anything that rests on the crown of her head is out. Hats, bonnets, caps, cowls, helmets, or hoods. Unless, of course, it comes to a disguise and for her own safety like the black hood worn by Al Shiraz. Otherwise, unobtrusive headpieces like circlets, crowns, or headbands are fine. Iron stones are perfect, as they don't touch her hair at all. They simply orbit in a circular pattern about her head. Masks are tolerable, but her patience for them is relative to the benefit they provide. These cheap imitation moonstone masks are simple disguises not only for Ophala Chelderstorn's benefit, so Lily won't be forced to murder her ex-lover if he's home during the burglary. Of course, Little Red looks cute in her mask, but I can't help but feel self-conscious. Almost silly. Oi! Hello there! Alright, here's the Android Estate Guard. Hey, yous! Why's you gotta bother me? Sure you look like noble type, but only friends of Mr. Andrade are supposed to come here. <laughs> I don't answer questions good. If I could, I wouldn't be standing in front of some stupid noble type home. Yeah, all right. Obviously he's a guard. Name is Bert. I'm just the guard here. Don't like it none, but times is rough. I hate this guy though. Hate him. <laughs> this is Mr. Andrade. He's fussy and too bloody rich for his own good. Talks to me like I don't know the job. I know it. I just don't want to do it. Besides, he don't even need me. He's got guys inside that'll kill you twice over. 
It's just taking up space. Ah. If you can crack the door, what do I care? I don't even want this job, and I sure ain't spoiling for a fight. I don't really care much. Ain't my house, so why should I try to stop people from going in? They're stupid enough to risk it, not my business. You know, I think you already mentioned how formidable the guards were inside. Why would Mr. Andrade leave a nobody like me out here if he didn't have bloodthirsty real guards inside? They are rough. <laughs> Hired mercenaries, I think. I'll just stay out here, thank yous very much. Just so wanna go in, that's yous business. All right, standing aside. Fair use well, just don't cause me trouble. <laughs> Lily stares at Bert sternly through the cheap imitation moonstone mask while Little Red fidgets with the door. She resolves that if he snicker even once, she'll repay the discourtesy with an arcane fury like he's never known. Done and done. A lord in his mansion is about to be visited by ladies in a mask. <laughs>